This is a very simple question that you may find yourself asking yourself, or maybe you're really stressed about it because you're like, do I really need to create a video intro outro for my e-learning content? Do you? Well, we have three questions that we're going to go through today that you need to answer in order to figure out if you even need to create video intros and video outros for your e-learning content. And then we're going to go through two ways to actually create those intros and outros. So welcome to the e-learning simplified YouTube channel. My name is Johnny Havy. I am one of the co-founders of e-learning partners. And really we created this channel e-learning simplified to do just that, simplify your e-learning for you. Why do we want to simplify e-learning for you? <laughs> because we want you to focus on delivering amazing, remarkable content to your learners so you can drive up sales and drive down training costs. So let's dive in. Let's start with the three questions that you need to answer in order to figure out <laughs> if you need bumpers and what your intro and outro bumpers would even look like if you do need them. So the first question is pretty simple. Number one, do you need a intro outro bumper for all of your videos? Well, let's zoom out for a second. Let's say you are creating a e-learning program that is 10 hours long. So that means that the total amount of content that you're producing is gonna be somewhere around 10 hours. So let's put you in the shoes of your learners. If you're going through 10 hours of video content, and let's say that there's on average 10 videos in each hour, that's 100 hours of video content. Do you think that you would want to see the same intro, outro graphic in every single video? I don't know about you, but I wouldn't. So when you're thinking about, do all of your videos need an intro outro bumper? Our recommendation to you is that they do not. And more specifically, how you can use intro outro bumpers in your e-learning program is more strategic. So what you can do actually is the first video in your e-learning <laughs> video series, you can have a bumper at the beginning of that video. That bumper is going to do a couple of things. It's going to introduce the program. It's going to introduce the subject matter expert or the person delivering the program. And it's gonna give a branding vibe and feel for the program. So I could have your logos, et cetera. Now, you really shouldn't use another intro. Well, slash you don't have to use another intro until you're introducing each of the milestones for your program. What is a milestone? Well, we have an entire video defining what a milestone is and why we like to call learning objectives milestones instead of learning objectives. A milestone, what it really is, is it is the touch points or the achievements that your learners are going to achieve as they move from point A to point Z in your program. Point A being <clears throat> they're just starting your program. They have got, they have not gotten any results from your program. Point Z being that they've finished the program and they've gotten all the results that your program promises. The milestones are what they achieve along the way. So what you could do is use an intro bumper to introduce each intro video to each milestone. So let's talk about outro bumpers. Do you need outro bumpers for every video? The answer is also no, you don't, but it is okay if you do, because your learners can just skip the outro if they've got into content number 25 and they're like, I'm really tired of this outro. So the outro, you can include if you really want to, it can be a good branding mechanism, but do you really need one? Not necessarily, but at least your learners can easily skip through it and go to the next video. Last point on intros, outros, and do all your videos need them? Think about it this way. If every single video in your series has an intro and an outro, and there's 100 videos, 10 hours of content, what that means is your learner is going to watch the video, they're gonna see the intro, they're gonna see the video, they're gonna see the outro, and then immediately they're gonna see another intro. So literally, you have dead space in the outro of the last video and the intro of the next video where they're not learning anything. 
So that's why you have to be really careful with using both throughout your entire program because it can get really repetitive. But if you just use outros, they can easily skip through them and it's not gonna literally be intro upon outro upon intro. So the second question that you need to answer is how long should your intros and outros be? Well, first, like we said, not every video needs an intro and technically not every video needs an outro. But if you are looking at adding intros to your videos, they need to be shorter at max five seconds long. And really, we don't recommend any intro bumper being five seconds long unless it is the intro bumper to the entire series. After that, if you are going to do intro bumpers, they should at max be three seconds long. Outros, really, you can have them be as long as you want because your learners at some point are just gonna skip through them. So the outro length isn't as important because once they go through 10 videos, they're just gonna start skipping the outros anyway. But with that being said, you probably don't want the outro to be longer than the video actually was. So a shorter outro than the actual length of the video is important. But in that outro, you can put all sorts of things. You can put the name of the video again. You can put the name of the milestone that the video is in again. You can put the name of the program again. You can put your logos. You can put what's coming up next, etc. Out of all those things, really the most important thing that you should include in an outro is what is coming up next. The rest of that stuff is kind of dead space. But if you want to include one thing in your outro, add the next video is going to be X or the next module is going to be X. So that's the second question you need to ask yourself is how long do the intros and outros need to be if you decide to use them? So the third question that you need to ask yourself when it comes to intro and outro bumpers is what should be included in the intro and outro? I know we've talked about this already by answering those first two questions, but let's recap. In the intro, if you are going to have an intro, really we recommend you have it at the beginning of your entire course, and that intro specifically is gonna say the course name, it's gonna talk about the subject matter experts, say their name, and then it's going to have some sort of branding. If you're going to have an intro in other parts of your course, or if God forbid you decide that you're gonna put an intro on every single video, Keep it really, really, really short and really we recommend only having the name of that video. Now, if you are going to use intro bumpers to introduce videos at the beginning of <clears throat> your milestones, which you should really only have three to five milestones in your program, unless you really have a long comprehensive program, maybe you have 20 milestones. Well, you could use an intro bumper to introduce the intro video of each milestone and in that case, yeah, I guess you could have the name of the course, you can have the name of the milestone and the name of the video. But really, the less you use intros in your program, the better learner experience for your learner. As long as the video itself, the beginning of the video itself explains what the topic, the video is for that video. Now, you could just take care of that by adding a graphic that says the name of the video instead of having an entire intro about it though. So that's why shorter is better. And if you really want an intro graphic for every single video, maybe just have it be one to two seconds. Definitely not more than three. On the outro side, what should the outro include? Well, pretty simple. The outro can really include anything that you want, but the most important thing that it should include if you really want an outro, and this really does provide value to your learners, is you want to say what content is next. You wanna give a call to action of what content is next. That could be saying, this is the next video, or next you need to complete this exercise, etc. A call to action, we don't actually even look at a call to action as part of the outro. It's just something that you want at the end of every video anyway. And either your subject matter expert needs to express that or you can add it visually with a graphic saying this is what's coming up next. Other than that, you can put whatever you want in the outro. We don't recommend necessarily using outros, but if you want to definitely use an outro over using an intro, you can put your logos there. You can put the name of the video, the name of the course, etc. So now that we've gone through these three questions, we're going to dig into how to actually create intros and outros.
There's two ways to do it, two really easy ways to do it. Let's dive into my computer here. Here we go. I have one open up here from one of our favorite clients, <laughs> Urban Ed Academy and Village Demand. So here is an intro that we created for them. As you'll see, the intros are no longer than three seconds long. So let's watch it really quick in this window, and then I'll tell you how we made it. The first way is you combine B-roll footage with text and with a soundtrack, and that's it. Pretty simple, I'll show you how the layers look. I'm using Adobe Premiere for this, but you could do this in really any editing software, you're just gonna need to be able to manipulate the layers of the video clips a little bit. Here we go, let's watch it. All right, what? And that's it, like this is it, three seconds long. And all we're saying is, here's the name of the course for about a second and a half, and then we have a second and a half saying the name of the topic and that's it and then our subject matter expert is in. all right so why did we opt <clears throat> to use this type of an intro well first of all <clears throat> the content in this course may not only live in the course or the lms it may live in other places so it was very important to have an intro because of that and that is why we branded the intro with the name of the course because we want people to know that this is coming from the Culture Before Pedagogy course. Then we have the name of the topic. But hey, this is a very simple intro to create. As you can see, we really only have four layers. We could have made this even more basic. <laughs> but basically, we have a piece of B-roll content, so stock footage that you can get from any really stock footage site. So I could go to Pexels. Pexels.com is a free stock footage site. There's a bunch of options here. Let's see, let's search classroom. So we search classroom. Here's all sorts of stuff, a classroom, virtual classroom, all sorts of pieces of content. So what you can do is pick one of these pieces of content, download it, and we can use that as part of our intro or outro bumper. So that becomes one layer. So what we did to dress up this clip is we took the clip, we actually put a blur effect on it. This is called VR blur. If you're editing in Premiere, you can just go to your effects down here, search VR blur, and there you go. Drag it onto the piece of footage and you're good to go. Then we went into the VR blur and we blurred at 75%. If I go to 0%, here's what the image looks like. This is 75% blurred. So that's what we did. We wanted to create some depth to this image. So that's what we did. Then we took another overlay. This is actually another piece of footage that we found. So you just, we searched writing on chalkboard. And we pulled a piece of footage from here. And we took that, and this is the one where we brought the opacity down. So we brought the opacity down for this clip to 53%. But if this was at 100%, this is what the clip looks like. So we took it down so that you could see the image below it. And that's really it. That's how we created the graphic of this image. Then what we did is we took a simple title card, a text card, and put it on top and we typed out what we wanted the name of the video topic to be and then the name of the course and that's it really simple intro graphics really can just be about layering and same thing we use the same graphic for the outro so we made it extremely simple the key really is you don't want to spend too much time building intros and outros because like we said, your learners may just skip them anyway. They're either gonna upset your learner because there's too many, or they're just gonna skip them, so why would you spend a ton of time on intros and outros? Yeah, as you can see, for the outro, we used a different clip, but we have the same kind of layered clips above, and then we have a clip underneath that is showing through this clip that we made semi-transparent. 
So really simple. Now there is another way to make intro outro clips that is actually even simpler. So this is what we called using stock footage, a text layer and audio, like a soundtrack, because we, we brought the soundtrack in here too. So this is one way. The second way to make intro outro bumpers is to just use a template. So I can go to captions and graphics here. Now, you can find templates online. So I'm gonna go to Google first, and I'm gonna go intro, outro bumper templates. So what you can do is go in here and, see we have competitors on YouTube telling you how to do this, but we're telling you more about intros and outros. But basically, you can find templates here. <clears throat> Here's 775 bumper templates, okay? All these different templates, what you can do is download them and then you just add your text and your images to the template and you have an intro, outro, bumper, super easy. Some of this stuff costs money, some of it's free. You can get a lot of it for free and a lot of it for low cost. Also, depending on what program you are using to create your content, there's going to be templates built in. So if you look, there's actually templates built into Adobe Premiere here that I can grab and manipulate. So basically, you can take one of these templates, drag it into the timeline, and you can edit the text, the images, etc. to make it fit what you need for your intro, outro, bumper. So really the key here, and to sum up, is there's two ways to make intro outro bumpers. One way, the first way we took you through is you can just make it from scratch and really all you have to do is layer different types of images. You can layer different video clips or maybe you just have one video clip and you put a title on it and that's it. You put a text block on it and that is your intro clip. That's one way to do it. The second way is you can pull a template from online, literally just search intro, outro, bumper templates. You can download it and make edits to it yourself, or you can actually find templates within the editing software that you're already using. So if you wanna be really clear about if you think your learners need intro, outros or not, we have a free masterclass right below this video you can sign up, there's a link there. You get instant access to our free masterclass. And what we go through in our free masterclass is how to define your learners. We go through how to build a learning transformation statement. And really the goal that we have for you with our masterclass is that you not only know the exact steps that you need to take to build and launch your e-learning program, but we also want to complete a couple of the steps with you and then part of that part of the steps that we give you are a process for you to figure out what your learners want so that you don't have to spend all sorts of money developing content like intros and outros but hopefully you learned enough in this video to set yourself up for success when it comes to intro outro bumpers so if you like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe to our channel we come up with new e-learning simplified content every week to simplify your e-learning and online course needs for you so you can focus on your learners remember turn on that bell so that when we put out that new piece of content you get notified and we'll see you in the next video